it looks like we're live. Uh, let me just pull up all of my info. It looks like I'm live on my Nevo. Let me make sure I'm live in the correct group so that I can actually read your comments. Okay, let me pull this up. Okay, refresh this page. It's funny, it says I'm live on a tropical grapevine reef. So much for that. Okay, so um, I see people are popping. Um, let me grab my holder. So I'm not doing this. This is our ribbon class for today, so I thought what better place to do it than in my craft room with the ribbon wall to talk about the differences of the types of ribbons that are out there. A lot of people had asked for a ribbon class, and it's kind of interesting to take that request and figure out, well, what exactly are you struggling with? And for most of you, it's picking out the right color ribbons. And I think when we did the color class, we kind of um, honed in on exactly what the issue was, is that you're working in a secondary or um, to tear, I can't remember that word, to, tear to tertiary or the third color combo and you're trying to um, make something work with that. So, yay! Okay, I'm seeing comments. So, hi Audrey, Peggy, Gail, uh, Tommy Sue, Kathy Fox, Martha, Nancy, and Pam. Yeah, Steve's up in Lake Tahoe right now. He comes back tomorrow. Um, and it was snowing last night, but there's not really snow on the ground, so it's pretty cold. Um, but hopefully he's pretty much done with his task for today. So, going over ribbon, what I thought we would do first is talk about the different types of ribbon, and then we would go over sizes, and then I have picked out four signs that we could kind of play around with with ribbon choices um, to make sure that you feel confident when you go and pick out your ribbon. And I think the most challenging part is you guys don't take something with you wherever it is, it's your design element, which would be like, if it's a deco mesh, cut a piece of the deco mesh off and take it with you to the store and match the colors. Um, taking a picture is okay, but a lot of times um, you can't get a real feel for the color unless you have it with you and you can match it. Cause that's what I do when we get ready for a live. Um, I will walk in to my craft room with the sign and begin to pick out the deco mesh color. And then looking at the sign, looking at the ribbon colors, looking at the ribbon lengths, or not lengths, widths, and then the actual colors. So I know, it's crazy. And this is just, I took all the patriotic out. I took all the summer, summer out. This, I mean, Christmas, this is all just stuff from Costco from last year. It's a little too big to actually put in bins, so it's just stacked. So all this stuff, believe it or not, is all like, I guess I'd call it like everyday ribbon. You can kind of match it in with anything that you're designing, although the baseball and the ladybug and some of the beach stuff will probably um, get put back into storage for next year because starting in June, we're moving on to Halloween. Isn't that crazy? I went through my videos and was looking at what were we covering last year in June and um, we had started with Halloween, moved into fall, moved into Christmas so that we had our stores stocked by the 1st of September. So that's our goal. Okay, so ribbons. What kind of ribbons are there? What kind of ribbons should you be looking for? What kind of ribbons should you be buying? Well, number one, they come in a wide variety of different lengths. You're going to get everything from four inches to two and a half inches to an inch and a half and then you can go a lot smaller than that but you should always be looking for a wired ribbon. The reason being is when that customer takes their wreath and they put their wreath away for the season it's going to probably get compressed. They'll probably not store it the way that we would meaning it's going to um, the, the ribbons are going to get smashed. The ribbon tails are going to get smashed. So when they get ready to take it out next season, it's so much easier for them to fluff the bow when it's wired than if it's not. If it's not, it's not going to come back from however that customer stored it. Um, so pick the very best ribbon, obviously, for what you need, but choices, right? Let me go over. 
Um, so this is four inch ribbon. I doubt that anyone's gonna really get into using four inch ribbon. Where you get into using ribbon this size is if you were making a wreath, uh, like 32 to 34 inches. Think of the shopping malls. This is the type of ribbon you're gonna wanna use in a shopping mall size wreath because a two and a half inch is gonna get lost. We won't even go with one and a half inch or smaller. And you can go, I think there's a little bit bigger, but four inches is the standard for what I call the mall wreaths. So this one in particular is just an open weave glitter, but this is just, I think it's the only four inch ribbon that I happen to have. This would make a really good um, base for a tree topper bow. So this could be the very large part of your tree topper bow. And um, I know you guys can't see it because it's out of focus, but I have a tree topper bow here, but I only use the two and a half inch. <clears throat> so not much of a demand for four inch. Save your money and invest it where you can recycle and um, not have this stuff kind of sitting on your shelf. Um, let's see the next. Let's see, why is this telling me it can't play my video? Hang on just a second. There we go, it's on. My candle's just being finicky. Okay, you have your burlap ribbon. Burlap, like this came from Hobby Lobby. It comes in a 30 foot length. It's one of the few ribbons that Hobby Lobby sells in a 30 foot or 10 yard spool. These will come out in the fall in their fall seasonal sections, but if you're smart, you'll go to Hobby Lobby's regular ribbon section. You'll find all the burlap because they kind of keep it all in um, the same aisle. Look for it. Sometimes it's at the very, very bottom. It's $9.99 a roll, but if you go when it's 50% off ribbon, then this is just $5 a roll. You will probably want to stock up on this for fall. This would be great with a lot of um, primitive Christmas ribbon or primitive Christmas wreaths. So I usually get about four rolls of this and um, pretty much can get you through most of the season. Um, it's very hard, however, because it is so thick. I'll show you. Um, it's kind of hard to get it to work in a fairly big bow because it is so thick. But let me show this to you guys. Um, so if you were to take this and try well that's that's kind of cool that's the end of that one so I do need to go in and get more but if you're trying to do like a ham tied bow this doesn't have an awful lot to it so it's pretty thick but it'd be a really good bow to lay down as a base or to do as like ribbon tails in a wreath something to kind of um, go to the outside of your wreath so let me go over. There is also um, Hobby Lobby sells this as well. This is again a 30 foot roll, two and a half inch wide. Um, for most of us in the wreath making industry, we're only going to use two and a half inch and one and a half inch. Um, we won't get into like the two inch or one inch or seven eighths inch. So the wide, the little bit wider one, you guys are automatically going to know it's two and a half inches. Um, but this is the, what they call waffle, um, or open weave or window pane ribbon. It comes in a wide variety of colors, but Hobby Lobby sells it. Again, they will sell this specially labeled for seasonal. Don't purchase it in the seasonal section. Go to their regular ribbon section. Purchase this in, um, on the 50% off days. Um, 30 feet, $9.99, you can get it for $5. And you'll want to pick up a lot. This you can use for your beach wreaths, a lot of your fall florals. This would look really great with, along paired up with the um, burlap. But it comes in this color. I'm looking to see what else I have. I know it comes in green. Um, so here it is in green. And then I also have it in a chocolate color, and I believe it even comes in orange. Um, but the only one that Hobby Lobby carries 
is just the plain beige burlap. So these are really good for a lot of florals. Okay, so, um, let's see what else. Why am I not seeing your guys' comments? It's like stuck. Let me look. I see your, let me um, go back in and refresh this. That is so odd why I'm not, the comments aren't flowing. So, let me go back out because I want to be able to address any comments you guys have. <laughs> I see you guys are all like, oh, like that, like that. Um, there they go. It's kind of, it's just taking its sweet time to pop up. All right, so um, another type of um, ribbon that is out there that I think it just came out last year um, is jelly ribbon. So if you remember from the 80s in high school, the jelly shoes that were so popular that everybody had to have, this is jelly ribbon. It comes in every single color. It has it in green, dark blue, uh, teal color, red, orange, yellow, and I think that's it. Um, again, in one and a half inch um, width and two and a half inch width, but this is amazing because A, you can put it on all your bee trees. Um, this would look really super cute. Oh, it comes in black and purple too. Um, so black, purple, and orange would be great on some Halloween wreaths because it's plastic and it is wired. Um, it's very thick. So it's going to, again, have the same problem that the burlap will, is because it's so thick, trying to gather together this, it's not going to gather together very well, but it is a great ribbon to incorporate into your wreaths, and it's something that you can add some structure to. So you can lay it underneath a ribbon that maybe doesn't have a really thick, um, tinsel strength to it, it kind of is floppy so this would be something good that you can prop it up and lift your ribbon up if it's a little on the thin side um let's see what else pam you asked how does that ribbon hold up in the heat in humidity you mean the jelly ribbon it's just plastic coating so it's going to hold up perfectly um it's not going to do anything funky like melt or anything like that because um, it's all stitched. It still has the wire around the outside. So I put a lot of this in a lot of the um, the bee trees I sold because um, it came in. Let's see, it comes in the royal blue. I have it in. Try not to get them to roll down. Um, the teal blue. So they look really, really cool. And like I said, they come in. This one in the two and a half inch, too. So it's kind of fun to have something different in your um, inventory to kind of play with as far as colors and textures. I'm really looking forward to using these in the Halloween. So I've ordered black, I already have the green, uh, purple, and orange. So those will all be predominant in um, Halloween race. So hopefully that helps. Why is it still kicking me out? Oh, okay. Yes, Denise, this is my, um, I don't call it my craft room because I don't craft in here. I call it my craft storage room. So this is where I store everything. And so this is where I can kind of come and coordinate. Um, but realize I've been collecting ribbon, <laughs> collecting, that's an odd word, um, since September of 2017. So this is just some. I don't have all my Christmas out, I don't have my fall, and I don't have my Halloween out. This whole rack would have to come down, and then I think Christmas takes up two, uh, fall takes up one, and then Halloween takes up the other. So, other ribbon. So if we're doing the rag bows, you're gonna want lace. The lace does not come with the wire in it. You can get them at Joann's, you can get them at, where did I get these at? Um, Michael's, I, th I think both of these came from Joann's. So 
these are just what you're going to incorporate in your lace um, rag bows because you don't really you don't need to have the wire texture in that that you kind of want it to have that fluffy um, messy look to it but it's I guess it's like a, a chaotic nice for a version of messy but I get it in all different sizes like the creams the ivories because those look really good for um, primitive as well as wedding wreaths so those are um, that particular ribbon so okay we went over the jelly we went over the burlap um, other ones because I think a lot of times we forget we can go basic right you've got your flex tubing you can use this as a ribbon like I used it like this um, when we did the witch hat wreaths so you can take these and kind of, you know, bunch them all together. I think this is just a green, a purple, green, purple, and orange. Uh, I just, you know, two times on each side and then just bunched it together. But don't forget about flex tubing. It's fun. It's a great filler instead of um, always trying to find like a one and a half inch ribbon to put in the center of your, um, like your wreath designs because you don't want to just have those deep crevices and holes you always want to put something in it so usually we do half bows but don't forget about flex ribbon because i think we forget about this too much and you can buy this in every color combination you can imagine and when you're purchasing online like i have these left over from uh what is it dollar tree so Dollar Tree every season comes out with their version. Like right now they probably have red, white, and blue. They're only a dollar a bag and it's 36 feet. So for a dollar each, stock up on all your colors. You know, the red, white, and blue can be incorporated into Christmas. You could take the red for the obvious or red and white for the obvious and then blue can be more of like um, a winter color. But they'll also come out with, um, look at the colors, brown, red, orange and green for fall and then Christmas they do silver gold red white red white and green so stock up on this when you go to Dollar Tree if you see me at Dollar Tree I'm grabbing like five of each because I know to keep Reese affordable and to keep a wide variety of price points you're going to want to kind of incorporate a little bit of everything so don't forget about flex tubing. It's fun, it's easy to use. Um, you don't really have to worry about the wired look so much because you know this you can kind of take and it just all kind of springs back. So it's a really nice texture to work with. So don't forget about this. And then, oh, the tubing. Oh, Denise has, okay, you have 18 by 18 by 10 inch boxes that your ribbon's in. Yeah, I know. So I'm on ribbon moratorium right now. Self-inflicted. Um, another type of ribbon that sometimes we overlook is what we call the um, gross grain ribbon. So I want to kind of show you this. This is kind of like the little ribbed ribbon, but um, there's a company called Oh My Gosh Goodies that sells it like this um, in the chevron print, but it, it's non-wired but it kind of has a rubber feel to it. This is perfect for like all of your sports wreaths. Um, like I use this color for the Steelers wreath um, and you can use it as a ribbon tails and you don't need to worry about the, the um, you know, having wire in it because it's just gonna lay flat in the wreath, which is perfect. It's just gonna kind of be there, you know, kind of like frayed out on the ends like you guys have seen me do before um, but this has a really good thickness and rubberness to it so um, it's really good for outdoor use so don't overlook the this is um I want to say this is like two inch I don't think it's like two and a half I'm looking at it. nope two and a half inches so I was looking at my um my cutting board so two and a half inches it's perfect so, oh my gosh, goodies.com. They're also on Etsy too. Um, the last one, there's two, sorry. There is the sheer. So, this is okay 
to kind of um, incorporate into your wreaths if you want something a little bit more softer, a little bit more sheer. But the problem being is because it is so sheer, you're gonna have to double up or triple up on it to get it to be like this dark navy. Otherwise it comes off very see-through. And the tinsel strength on this is not as thick as some of the others, but it's really good for what I call filler ribbon, like the half bows, to kind of pair this with the burlap to kind of um, soften some of that harshness of the, um, the window pane. It looks really good. So sheer ribbon, just be careful because like you can look at this at Hobby Lobby. This is a 30 foot roll too. Um, don't be miss, like you can purchase it like this. So if you're not sure if it's um, sheer or not, when the ribbon has that little plastic covering, kind of take your finger and put your finger underneath the plastic and kind of pull it out and look and see, is it true navy or is it just a sheer? You have every right as a consumer to know what you're buying. So kind of pulling it out of the, um, the plastic a little bit can help you make an informed decision as to do you really want a sheer or are you looking for a true dark navy? The last one, besides like all the ones that we're used to getting, is the satin ribbon. Now a lot of people hate satin ribbon because for some of it, and I'm looking for one that I have, I think it's this one. Um, this one has a little bit lighter um, tinsel strength to it. This came from Michaels, but I love this. This was my chocolate ribbon, um, but I like the satin in the fact that you can really take it and just kind of run your fingers through it and kind of bring that life back into it. But there's a lot of people who don't like working with satin because it's slippery. Um, like I have it up here in this fall wreath, but it holds its shapes just fine. So adding it with other ribbon that's a little thicker can kind of help give it some life if it's really super thin. I know I had a gray one. Yes. This gray one does not have as well of a tinsel strength, meaning you'd look at it and almost think it doesn't have wire in it, but this one's kind of, it's, a, it's not thick. So this has a small tinsel strength, which means that the wire used in it is very, very thin, but it does have it. It's just not gonna do an awful lot. So when in doubt, pull it out away from the, the plastic packaging and just verify, you know, look at, like this is what I would do. I would pull it out from its packaging, probably this far, and I do this to see how well does it hold its shape. You know, if it's not thick enough like this one here, you know, when you pull it out and you form it, it's gonna stay. So this tells me this has a little bit thicker wire in it than the other ones do. Okay, so that pretty much covers the ribbon that's out there. Everything else is just personal preference. So it's all gonna be, you know, if you want um, solids or if you want a print. And I think sometimes you get lost in looking at the print and what I always try to say is make sure you have, because when you look at this, there's not an awful lot of solids because we get caught up in all the pretty prints and the textures and, you know, um, the designs on it. But what we forget to do all the time is incorporate some solids. So Craft Outlet came out with a ribbon bundle and what they did is they incorporated, I think it was 12 ribbons that were all solids for the summer. So those are great ribbons to incorporate into your designs. Then when you take them and you pair them up, you have some good design choices. So I always say when you're doing a ribbon, depends on the ribbon you're, you're, you're working on um, to make, I think this came here, um, don't do, well, I'm trying to think, 
This one has one, two, three, four, five. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six different types of ribbon in here. But if you look, I have a solid, which plays off of the additional colors. I also have the, um, the plain just beige. And then everything else is just kind of, they complement each other. So this is all staying in those fall browns, light browns. So it's like shades of browns and beige. So it looks really good together. So some people go, well, can I put, um, what do you call it, like stripes? and polka dots together. Can I do a plaid with um, star print ribbon? I say as long as it stays in the same shade palette, um, try it. The worst case scenario is, is it's not gonna look so, um, it's not gonna look right and then you'll pull it out anyway. Um, okay, so look, Mary says she's ashamed of how many bins we have. Okay, yeah, I know. But like this, I haven't even used hardly any of it this year. I will be dipping into it quite a bit as we get into Christmas, but um, it's just, it's crazy. Like, I mean, some of this stuff will kind of cycle itself out. Um, so let's go with some um, color choices. So here's the homework stuff. So if I, go to say Hobby Lobby and I buy this sign. Um, I will take this sign while I'm in Hobby Lobby, go into their ribbon aisle, whether it's the seasonal section or in their main section. And don't forget Hobby Lobby has both. The non-seasonal stuff rotates every other week is 50% off. Easy way to think about it is buy one, get one free. Um, I think it's Joann's and Michael's their ribbon is sold in either 12 or 15 foot lengths. So you will always need to buy two. Um, I'm trying to think, worst case scenario is a 12 foot ribbon will generally get you a good size bow. So if you're going to incorporate some of your ribbon choices into a bow, you need to figure out is it gonna be a big bow or is it gonna be a little bow, like a little accent bow, like a little bow off to the corner? Or is it gonna be something big that um, kind of spills out like a Christmas wreath type of a bow? So knowing that, you're always, I always say buy two, because if you come up short, you will be so thankful that you bought that extra roll so that you can use it um, on another design or you can incorporate it in a bow. If you were saying, oh, I'm only going to do um, half bows and ribbon towels and I'm going to do something different, um, like, I'm trying to see the little lobster. Like if we were to take this and I was going to use the lobster in the wreath as well, I might not want a bow to go with this as well. I might not want a big bow up here. So if you're going to use like an embellishment and a sign, you might want something a little bit smaller but when in doubt, always buy two. Um, okay, so utilizing this sign, which came from Hobby Lobby, it's 40% off, it's in their spring selection. Go figure, it's not spring. This would be summer. There is a wide variety of choices to pick uh, for this particular ribbon. Obviously, the most obvious choice is gonna be red, but you can completely skip the red if you wanted and just go with white navies and some shades of those colors and maybe just a little bit of pop of red like you could go red flex tubing um in the the main bow tails like you could go um something 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 i'm looking because i always pick I, oh, whenever I'm doing a wreath, I always pick um, at least two, two and a half inch ribbon choices and at least two one and a half inch choices. It depends on how much is on the roll, if I have enough to make a, a bow out of that. Sometimes I don't, and then you have to kind of dip into a third or fourth choice 
you know, because you ran out of ribbon, but um, stuff like this would be super cute with, you know, I'll sit here and take my sign, which is if you were doing this in a store, you're gonna do it the exact same way. You're gonna sit here and run it along the ribbon choices to make sure you're in the right color red because you don't wanna go something a little too dark. Like this would be super cute just for your solid. And this is, this is a satin with very small tinsel strength. So this is not gonna hold up well. This would make a great half bow. Probably wouldn't do well incorporated in it as a bow because it doesn't hold its shape too well. Um, we can go with, um, I like doing some fun prints, like taking some of these, something kind of fun like that. You could go the Harlequin, you can go Chevron, um, gotta get rid of the ladybug stuff. You could do, um, the gingham would look good because it's almost like a picnic table look to it, um, and incorporate some solid reds, some solid whites. You just gotta pick a, your color palette. So if I was doing this wreath, I would probably do a white base because there's my neutral, right? I'm not gonna do red and I'm not gonna do blue. I would do white base and then incorporate either navy and red. You could do curls, you could do ruffles. It depends on if you want it to be more tall from top to bottom, or do you want it more like overall size wise, but less thick. Um, determines the type of wreath making um, style. Like, do you do curls? Do you do ruffles? Do you do a poof? I would probably do a poof on this one just because it's gonna create a very good thick solid base and then um, a, I know I have a ton of the gingham ribbon and I even have it up here too in a 50 foot roll so I'm pretty safe if I wanted to incorporate that because it kind of looks like summer picnic so those would be my choices um, but definitely incorporating um, looking I have some this is a navy kind of like a royal blue, not quite the right tone because this is a little bit of a brighter blue. You can do something that has, um, let me find it. I'm trying to think where I put it. I just had it when it is right here. I'll take this one down. You could even go something like this, like you can go uh, navy and white, still keeping it with the gingham, you know, because some people go, can you mix and match patterns and whatever? Absolutely. Those would still look amazing. You could put in, um, now that we're in two, one and a half, you could look for a solid red to be your, your base, or you can go with like a solid navy to be your base, but... Um, just stay within your color palettes. I think sometimes we get so caught up in, oh my God, there's tons of red. Which red do I pick? Just kind of take them, pull them out, stick them next to your sign. If you didn't purchase your sign from Hobby Lobby, take it with you. Put it in your purse. Put it in your backpack. Open it up. Hey, I got to match my ribbon with um, whatever's going on the ribbon wall. Um, there is... All different kinds of ribbon you can pick. Trying not to make it cascade all the way down. You could even do these colors the white and blue polka dot with these. And again, it doesn't have to all be two and a half inch ribbon, it could just be within these color palettes. It could be um, like this. We could go with these, these, and these. And then I would make sure that my deco mesh matches white base with this color red and then a navy blue instead of a royal blue. 
but you can kind of see how, you know, having ribbon available to you, taking your sign with you is only going to help you um, with your choices. So, um, there we go. Okay, put this one back. So, do you guys have any questions about something simple like this? Let me just double check my tablet. And it went back to, there we go. Um, okay. Yes, the black sheer would be perfect for Halloween, um, Kathy. Okay, so let's give you guys another choice. What would you guys pick for this one? And then I'll show you what we would do. So I'm giving you guys time to catch this one, but always, 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 if you can take your sign, if you're waiting for your sign to arrive, go to the website and do a screenshot of that and grab it. I don't know if you guys can kind of see this. I'm trying to make sure it's there. So this sign came from Jane's Front Door Decor. She actually makes two of these, so it would be perfect to do um, a left and a right double door. So what color ribbons would you guys pick for this? It's actually not that hard if you stay in the two to four ribbon category. And I think I got it. When you get your ribbon at Michael's, they come in five yard rolls. Um, if they're five yard rolls, that's only, what is that, 15 feet? So yes, definitely get two rolls. I mean, I'm used to buying everything in 10 yard or 30 feet increments. So always, and if it's a design you totally love, if it's a color ribbon you love, buy more, you know, it depends. If you're gonna get it on clearance, that's where most of this came from. It was mostly all clearance um, ribbon. A lot of times when I go on Craft Outlet, the Reef Shop, Trendy Tree, I shop the clearance. I shop the what's on sale now um, to kind of pick this one out. So you guys are going, okay, with Aqua de Teal, uh, beige and tans. So this one's kind of tricky because the colors on this are very downplayed. It's muted. It's almost like it has a um, beige wash over everything. So when you do grabs of, say, a teal ribbon like, um, let me grab this. It takes it into a different color. So this doesn't it doesn't play off of it like it should. Like this is almost like a washed um, look on the sign. So I'll take the plastic off of this. Can I get the plastic off? Yes, I can. Okay. So like this. So it's very washed out. I mean, you could probably pull it because it's in, it's mostly in the umbrella a little bit. But definitely you could do this. You could come in with, um, I put it up here, with some of the um, window pane mesh because it's a bee tree. So if you're going to add shells or starfish, this makes for a perfect um, bottom type of bow or you can incorporate it in your ribbon because then you can attach or kind of stick your starfish in between the window pane mesh. But you could definitely go with these colors. You could go with, um, let's see. You can probably, there's this ombre color that would look good. But see, I would sit here and go, okay, this is a definite. So then I would start to match my colors here. These are okay, but one's super sparkly, the other isn't. Um, so I would probably grab this one and 
stud. But see how we're kind of losing the color? We're kind of popping it a little too bright and you want to kind of stay a little bit softer. So either you can not do these ones and go with something a little softer like See how the seafoam green almost becomes a challenge to find, but you could easily pull this off too. So with something a little bit more vintage, for me, I wouldn't go with pops of, um, I wouldn't put a lot of sparkle stuff in it. I would keep it very subdued. I would do the beige. I would probably do the seafoam green. Um, let's see. There is the sea foam with the polka dots. So it looks very nostalgic. And you could go to Pinterest and search on Pinterest and put vintage ocean decor, vintage ocean wreath, or you know, seaside cottage wreath. Because you want to pull that old feel in there from like the 20s and 30s. And because that's what I think the sign is about, the sign, and here's that swirl pattern too, if you look, the swirl pattern is actually in the underside of the umbrella. But definitely you can go with beige, the seafoam green, I wouldn't go glittery, sparkle, that kind of stuff. Just kind of keep to the tone and the simplicity of the wreath, and I think that's when you'll, you pull on the heartstrings of the buyer and the sign, the ribbon choices, the color choices, um, it all kind of uh, blends well together. So those are um, some options you have. I will put these away. Okay, let's look at another one that might pose a bit more of a challenge. So we have this one. So I saw your comments. Yeah, I try not to buy five yard rolls, but if it's a ribbon color or a pattern or a texture I love, I'll just go buy two. Um, but in that case, you almost have to buy four. Um, the 30 yard roll, it depends. If you're going to do like on a 14 inch wreath frame, if you're just going to stay around the outside, so you can start to do the math and figure out on general how much do you use. If you do 15, 14 to 15 inch tails times two, um, and what is that? Not times two, uh, times 12, you kind of have to, you know, do the math and figure out, okay, every 12 inches is a foot. Um, you're gonna pro I would probably go three or four yards of ribbon. So I'm sorry. I was like flipping the sign around. Um, so the signs, yeah, these signs came from Jane's. I think this, yeah, this one's a Jane's front door decor too. Um, the other one was Jane's. The lobster one came from Hobby Lobby. So I always look and I have drawers and drawers full of signs. I just need to stop. Next to ribbon, I think signs is my weakness. But there's this one. What would you do with this one? Yeah, Cindy, you did really good. You said something with a little stripe to pick up on the umbrella. See, so you guys are looking at the details and you're playing off of the details. So looking at your sign, you're like, okay, this one is a hummingbird with a lot of morning glories. It's just your basic home sweet home. So this could be left up eh, probably from spring right into like uh, through summer if you needed to. Um, Cynthia says, I need to shop at Jane's. Yeah, I think she, she was having a flash sale. I don't know if that was yesterday or today, but it was 10% off all of her signs for the next 24 hours. Um, so there's that. So Gail says light purple, small polka dot, pale green, dark purple. Okay, I like your pattern. What would you guys be thinking of for the colors of your deco mesh base? This could look perfect as a sign and a grapevine. 
but um, what color would you start off with your base for your deco mesh? It's kind of capitalizing a little bit on what we had done before. I like how you guys are picking your colors. Seafoam green and lavender with some light blue, Cynthia said. Those are really super cute. Okay. I am waiting. It's so crazy to think about how long the delay is on some of this. Ooh, apple green mesh. I love that. Look. Um, apple green. Um, not that one. So, we do have apple green mesh. This is actually called moss and natural so it has like that um what you call it that tan in it so if you're going very rustic you could definitely do that let's see um, there is just the regular moss screen that you can incorporate it depends on if you're going to want to play to the darker shades of the purples and the greens, you could definitely incorporate that. Um, let's see, lavender. I wonder if I have any lavender here. I probably have lavender someplace else, and I need to bring some lavender back in over here. But you could even incorporate those colors and do a white base so your deco mesh colors are right on par so you know you can choose whether or not you want to do them as curls that might be fun because you've got some hibiscus flowers that the hummingbirds feeding off of it's very tropical esque so you could go tropical too um, with those okay let me look at what you guys picked Let's look. I like how you guys are thinking. Okay, so yeah, Julie says do a white base. I definitely would say do white base because you've got to have your neutral base color in, and then with that you can play with your moss green, your purple. You could do curls, like I said, to make them look almost flower like. Um, so, let me see, there's all different kinds. So see, here's where having solid colors comes into play because we're so caught up in, um, what do you call it, patterns and stuff like that. Um, I have this that will look super cute. There's this color. So you're starting to pull in your colors. A little bit of a mossy green. Do I have any mossy green? Um, kind of like that would definitely be pretty you could go um, hi bells there is this checkered pattern that would look really super cute you could pull in where is it you could even incorporate a little bit of the window pane um, mesh into that so when you have those Here's your color choices. And then you could pop it with a little bit brighter, like um, the one I showed you here. Would look super cute. See how your color palette comes together. Just picking two or threes and see how plaid goes with checkered and it could even go with um, stripe. There is this one that you could kind of come in here with that would look really cute you could also do um, this is my favorite ribbon i found last year so we have the tulips so here's our color palette let's see if i can kind of do this so for it to go with like these 
along with ah, that went. Okay, we can kind of go here with those color choices, and it just depends. You could do some in the base of the wreath and then save other colors for the bow, but these are super cute color combos. What do you guys think? Thumbs up if you like it. Hearts if you totally love it. Um, but see how the, the color combos come off looking nice? But the only way I'd be able to pick those colors is to have my sign with me. So having your sign with you makes it all super easy. Okay. <sighs> On my top shelf. Oh, I know there's so many things. I could incorporate some florals too and bring the florals back into that. And I actually have some morning glories um, that we could have incorporated with this as well. So you can incorporate those just to kind of play off your sign. You could take those and add those instead of a bow, add some florals to those. Hobby Lobby, by the way, for Morning Glories. Okay, last sign, because I think you guys are slowly getting the hang of it. You need to take your, your sign with you when you go to the store. And this is the one that I got from Jane. I'm actually really looking forward to playing with this sign this year. It's a new design for all the people who are really into Candy Crush. So this is Sugar Rush Lane. So this one gives you an awful lot to pick from, but it could also become too overwhelming for a creative if we don't curb our enthusiasm on this particular design. So what do you guys see here? I mean, I think the obvious is going to be green and pink, especially the pink with a polka dot. That would look super, super cute. Um, I'm looking to see if I do. I have some pink and white. Believe it or not, this came from the Dollar Tree. Um, it came in four yard lengths, but for only a dollar. If you go back into their um, party section where they sell like balloons and stuff, they have like uh, there's a blue and white one, and then there's a pink and white one for the babies, obviously. But look how cute that would be with that. And there's a ton of different choices for this. But so many possible choices, you could easily get lost. Okay. What do you guys think? Purple jelly ribbon. Oh. Where'd my purple one go? I don't think I have purple yet. I think it's coming. But yes, oh, just the embellishment choices that come up. Okay, so when Hobby Lobby puts all of their stuff on Christmas clearance, there's a lot of candy picks that are always left. It'd be super cute to incorporate some of those items into your design. But those are pretty hard to find right now. But um, definitely, um, I think this is where you have to kind of um, capitalize on clearance items. So neutral base, um, Kathy says, yes. Yeah, the green plaid right here, that would be super cute um, with that particular sign look. That really pops that together. That looks really good. Um, there's even, I don't know if you guys can see this, there's like a pink and a gold. See, I would just take my sign. This is what I do right before my lives. I'm sitting here doing this, looking for um, color choices. This would be super fun too. This right here. This came from, I want to say Joann's. Yes. Joanne's last year, but look at how pretty that is. Let me put this down. But look at how fun that would be 
because it's all got like little swirl patterns but this was from Christmas last year so I think this was like 80% off but this is all coming back so this green would be super fun to incorporate um, there's the lime green chevron you could definitely go with there is this purple and white and green plaid that will look great. There is green and white plaid in a smaller print, so you could go like bigger for um, tails, and then you can come back in and add this to the bows. So if we didn't want to do something so busy with the bows, we could definitely do that. Um, let's see. Every time I pull them out, let's see. Move these guys over here for now. Mm -hmm. Nope, wrong color shade. Sometimes I even do that, I'll pull them out, and they're like the wrong color shades for this. But I think definitely the pink would be super cute. Um, I even have this that was left over from Hobby Lobby. So it's just in their regular section, but it has kind of like a little bit of those colors in it that would make a super cute read. So I think you guys kind of got the idea. Do what I do. Take your sign with you. If you are waiting for the sign choice, like I said, go to either Jane's website, get the biggest possible image that you can, take a picture of it, because we all take our phones with us, and then you could take your phone out and kind of hold your phone up and try to find those choices. Now here's where I think you come away challenged is Hobby Lobby doesn't have a section like this. Um, and theirs is pretty minimal. So, and then with the online retailers like Craft Outlet and the ReShop and even Perpetual Ribbons, we're looking at a picture and the picture image can be very misleading because it depends on what light did they shoot that in. Hopefully they shot it in a um, cool white, which is, it simulates daylight. Um, but if they're shooting it in a warm light, that kind of orangey glow, it's gonna kind of discolor our ribbon choices. And then sometimes when we get it, it's not the right shade. And then we're looking at that going, that's kind of not the right shade for anything. So always better to have your sign in hand when you decide to go um, shopping. Let's see, look, I'm still looking. This would be super cute too. It's like this ombre fun color. So it's just a rainbow ribbon. This is Easter. So see, I save everything. Cause you just never know when your design choice will kind of um, come into play. So really quick, what questions can I ask or answer for you? Um, Vera says, so you could go with black and white polka dots to pull out the wording color on this one. You could, but sometimes what ends up happening is the obvious, like incorporating the black just becomes it's something you focus on more than something that you complement. So I'd probably stay with the pastel colors and not so much go for the obvious black. I would definitely do green, pink. Um, white and then incorporate those pastel kind of fun candy colors in there okay well I'm hoping that you guys found I'm trying to make sure I stay right on target with the time I hope you guys found the class beneficial um, sometimes our inspiration might come from a favorite ribbon like I'm trying to look at like something that I would pull from ribbon. A lot of times we'll go and we'll just buy it based on our color choice like this one. You know, it has the tulips in it. This is obviously, see this is what I'm saying, it's wrapped in plastic. Pull it out to the side and look. Obviously it's sheer, but if we put it on a white um, deco mesh base, and then looking at the colors here, you could go dark purple, you know, shades of purple, um, kind of pop it with a little bit of the greens, the light greens and the dark greens in this. Um, that's where you can incorporate some of your florals, 
and uh, frame a sign um, if we're going to do that. But whatever your inspiration is for your design that you're trying to incorporate, if it's ribbon, just cut a little piece of the ribbon, tuck it in your purse so that when you're out and about looking at signs or looking at ribbons or deco mesh, you can match them up with whatever it is that you have. See what? I'm like, oh, these would be perfect. So they're all just kind of playing with each other. So that makes a really good color palette. And then because you didn't go with the obvious choice and grab everything, your design looks very eye appealing. You want to make sure, obviously, pictures are going to sell your image. If you, you might have the greatest design, the best ribbons, the most awesome sign, but if your pictures don't sell your image, it's going to sit and it's not going to do anything. So make sure you're taking a picture of your wreath on your door in natural lighting. Um, don't use any overhead lighting because that kind of creates a false color. Put it on a door um, right around sunset, right around sunrise. Cloudy rainy days are perfect because the lighting is perfect because there's no direct sunlight. Um, try to shoot it in front of a window if you don't have a really good door. Purchase a prop door so you can have something to shoot all of your images on and make sure you're capturing the details. Capture the details in your sign. Um, capture the details in your ribbon because the customer's not going to know until it arrives if it's what they kind of hoped it would be or hopefully in this case they're going to be amazingly blown away by how wonderful it looks um, when they actually pull it out of the box. I don't know why my thing is going so long. Um, so Kim asked where did you get the colored window pane from? Uh, Craft Outlet. Craft Outlet carries the brown I think they have it in the green um, and orange. I think there's actually a black too. So you can just look up window pane ribbon, but um, like this brown came from Craft Outlet and so did the green. I was trying to find it. Yeah, Craft Outlet. Sometimes though, these are hard to find right now. If you can get your hands on them before everybody else starts purchasing their fall stuff, because I guarantee you most people right now are doing their patriotic wreaths, they're doing summer wreaths, they're not even thinking Halloween, fall and Christmas. So you guys need to be going online because in June, June we're doing Halloween. We're also going to be incorporating fall. Um, July is all going to be fall. August is all going to be Christmas and then September's all Christmas push because at that point what we want to have done is we've stocked our store so well that come Labor Day when moms are ready to go back online and shop we are there for them to provide them with what they're going to be getting their Halloween wreath, their fall wreath, their Christmas wreath so take advantage of those times but start looking now you know like Hobby Lobby's got their fall stuff in you know start walking around um, and grabbing picks like you know I have all my fall picks but um, start picking them up one at a time if you like them if you're going to incorporate a design around say you went into Hobby Lobby and you found this guy you're going to want to look for a sign you're going to want to make sure, um, I'm looking, let's see how, I'm already, I'm already ahead of you guys, I'm shopping now, so that these will be ready for Halloween, so shop now while they're still inventory and stuff's not sold out for the season. So hopefully this helped you. Um, I thank you guys for choosing to tune in and watch me. I am always on in the public group Friday nights at five. This Friday we're doing back to school and I'll show you what the inspiration is. 
this is the inspiration. So going back to school, which is perfect because people can buy it now for gifts for their teachers to say thank you for a year, or it's gonna be in the store or ready for customers to purchase when they go back to school as a way oops, of saying thank you for your service or thank you for teaching my child this year. So back to schools Friday at five and that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys found it beneficial and I will talk to all of you on Friday. Have a great rest of the week, everybody. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.